In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a thing called back EMF uh, and self-inductance, which is essentially the same thing, but what's just two different applications. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing to look at is motors and generators. Motors and generators are essentially the exact same thing. You have a magnetic field, uh, and here I have it between two permanent magnets, and a coil of wire that rotates through that magnetic field. Now, if it's a generator, then we actually apply the energy to turn it. We, we supply the energy and that thing causes this to whoop, let's go back to that. If we supply some energy that causes that thing to rotate then we have a flux, a changing flux through this loop and that induces a current through this coil uh, and it's going to reverse direction every revolution or half revolution I guess and so we get a f alternating current through that loop. Uh, and the generator equation tells us that the uh, EMF induced in that coil at any point in time is given by the number of turns times, times the magnetic field times the area of the loop times the angular velocity of that thing times sine omega t uh, where this is angular velocity and this is time. Of course that means we're going to get our peak voltage when omega t this quantity here is 90 degrees that is to say at exactly a quarter turn past here if this is straight up and down then we have the most flux through there so when that's rotating right through that instant we have our peak voltage now a generator okay so we took our mechanical energy we got this induced EMF and so we have current coming out of this thing uh, a motor actually reverses that. So here I have a north and south pole again, uh, but this time we are supplying current into this loop and what we have is current going through this way around and then back out this way and because there's current through this wire there is a force on that wire and since force is equal to current times the length of the wire in the magnetic field times the magnetic field the torque is actually also related to that it's the number of turns of loops times the area of the loop times the magnetic field times the current times the sine of the angle um, and this actually isn't coming from the angle between the the magnetic field and this current carrying wire the magnetic field here is very constant from north to south this way and these loops of wire are always perpendicular to those fields it doesn't matter where they are rather this is the sign of the angle between the lever arm and the force and so you can see when this is straight up and down and there's the most flux through the loop that also happens to be the spot where there's no torque on the loop. Okay, But because both a generator and a motor result in a coil spinning through a magnetic field, both of them are going to induce a current or an EMF in that coil. Now for a generator that's the point, but for a motor that's not the point. For a motor that's actually extra resistance because Lenz's law says that that induced EMF is going to oppose the change that caused it. And so what we do is if we think about that, uh, that means that instead of the current all going in this direction, the back EMF or the EMF that's induced in this current is going to try to make current flow the other way around this loop. And since the generator equation tells us that that voltage is proportional to the angular velocity, the higher the angular velocity, the greater the back EMF. We call it back EMF. It's back against the voltage of the source. So the faster it spins, the more back EMF we get in this coil, which actually kind of explains what happens when you turn on a big motor, like if the refrigerator uh, compressor pump kicks on or the or the uh, uh, air conditioner pump kicks on then all the lights dim for a second and that's because initially there's not very much resistance in that coil and here's a problem to show you what I mean so the windings in a motor have a resistance of 5 ohms because if you think about the windings in a, mo uh, in a motor that's just a a coil of conductor. There's not very much resistance in it. It's just lots of wire. So uh, not too much resistance. So a 5 ohm resistance in that coil. The motor is connected to 120 volts. When the motor reaches full speed against its normal load, the back EMF is 108 volts. Calculate the startup current 
and the current at full speed through that coil. Well, the startup current's pretty easy. Uh, we just use Ohm's law, V equals IR. Uh, and so we have a voltage of 120 volts applied to a resistance of 5 ohms, and so we get a current of 40 amps, which is a heck of a lot of current. Uh, that's actually that's actually enough to trip a breaker. Uh, most breakers are at 15 amps, some are at 20, which is why major things in your house are on double breakers. They're on 40, 40, 30, 40 amp circuits so that they can actually draw enough current to start. Now, uh, once it's actually turning, then we're going to have less current through it. And if we think about why, uh, well let's draw a circuit that shows what's happening. We have our voltage, uh, then we have the resistance in the coil, but because it's spinning there's a back EMF. And I'm going to draw that as another battery through there. Okay, So we have our plus side, our minus side, and our plus side, and our minus side. And that shows us that these two batteries are sort of opposing each other. This is the back EMF. This is against what we already had. Now if you remember Kirchhoff's rules say that the sum of the voltage drops around a loop has to be zero. So if this is 120 volts, this is negative 108 volts, this is my resistance from the motor of 5 ohms, so what do I have? Well I have 120 equals 5 times whatever the current is plus 108. So I subtract off that 108 and I get 12 equals 5i and i is simply 2.4 amps. So there's a heck of a lot less current in here once it actually gets up to speed and it's turning against its full load. Okay, so when you design it, when a motor is designed, this has to be taken into account because if this is if there's too much back EMF, then it's not going to be able to turn the load. If there's not enough, then it's going to spin too fast and you still have to have resistance in your coil, uh, otherwise you can draw way too much current. So there's kind of that cool thing where the generators and motors are the same thing and a motor generates its, its own current against the supplied current. Now, that same thing happens in a thing called an inductor. This is a passive circuit element and it's kind of an interesting thing. It's basically just a coil, a solenoid. So if you imagine just a whole bunch of loops of wire, a solenoid, in a DC circuit, this is just an electromagnet because as the current flows around through here, if the current's headed this way, then the magnetic field is always to the right on the inside and it's always to the left on the outside, which gives you a magnetic field, north side, south side, uh, and it comes around like this. Okay, so it's a solenoid. And for a DC circuit, this thing doesn't have very much resistance. It's an electromagnet. doesn't do a whole lot. It does produce a field, a magnetic field, given by the uh, mu naught, the perme permeability of free space, times the number of turns in this solenoid times the current in those turns divided by the length of the whole thing. That's the magnetic field inside that solenoid um, due to the current in there. Okay. Well, if there's a magnetic field, there's a potential for uh, an induced voltage, for an EMF. And if there is an induced voltage in here, because as the current increases through here, there's going to be more magnetic field this way, uh, then the, the Lenz's law says that there's going to be an induced EMF that's going to create a magnetic field back the other way to try to keep that magnetic field constant, which actually means current back to the left or a voltage back to the left. Well, we only get that if there's a change in magnetic flux, right? So if the current is changing in the coil, then the magnetic field also changes, which is causing a change in flux, and that causes an induced EMF that opposes the change that caused it, so it goes backwards. And so this little circuit element is actually called an inductor, uh, and it, it has self-inductance. And it's basically one half of a transformer, right? With a, with a transformer, we put another coil next to it, and we get that induced EMF to produce a different voltage than what we started with. Now, inductance is actually the ratio of flux through the coil to the current in the coil for a solenoid. And so the number of turns 
times the magnetic field, that's and that should be phi b, divided by the current gives me this thing called inductance. And it's measured in Henry's. Uh, Henry is the same as an ohm second, um, kind of an interesting measure. But if the current is changing in time, then we can actually use the inductance to figure out the back EMF, which is why we would care. So if the current is changing in time, then the EMF is induced in the coil that opposes the change. And so we take the inductance of the coil times the change in current divided by the change in time, and that gets us our EMF. And it is a back EMF. It's against the change that causes it. And this basically says the more rapidly the current is changing, the greater the back EMF. So just like a motor, um, when it first starts, there's a, hundred, a lot of current through it. Um, but then as it gets up to speed, there's less current because there's more back EMF. This thing, uh, this inductor, works sort of the same way. If there's no change, there's no back EMF. But if there is change, the more change there is, the greater that back EMF.